This is election 2018, the race for Doniana County Sheriff. I'm Fred Martino. In partnership with the League of Women Voters of Greater Las Cruces, we invited the candidates to join us for this forum. They will have 60 seconds to respond to each question and should not mention their opponent in the answer. The candidates include Democrat Kim Stewart and Republican Todd Garrison. Thank you both for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. We also want to thank Kim Sorensen. She's the president of the League of Women Voters of Greater Las Cruces, and she has our first question. Thank you. Uh, we'll start with you, Kim. Do gun laws in Doña Ana County need to be strengthened? Explain. I believe what exists currently is is adequate. Um, in in I think with a lot of laws uh, in these types of areas, they often need to be enforced. So you'll see inconsistent enforcement perhaps, and that is an issue that uh, I think could require more closer inspection and also some communication with the district attorney's office on those types of incidences. Uh, in terms of uh, additional laws, I'm uh, very much in favor of uh, fixing the background investigations that uh, licensed gun dealers participate in. Uh, I think we're under an impression that they all somehow connect and if you run someone in Doniana, you know what's done in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. That's not the case. So I am in favor of strengthening those, but they're federal in nature. Thank you. Todd? Yes, ma'am, I, I believe that the laws that we currently have in place are are adequate to uh, take care of the, the needs of Doniana County and I, I believe that uh, it is very important to work with our district attorneys and, and with the officers to keep them current on those things and to make sure that our district attorney is, is holding people accountable uh, for the things that ha happen and occur. Um, I believe too that uh, working with the judges on those different issues would be an important thing to make sure that things are held up consistently throughout the, uh, the county. Okay. Todd, what improvements, if any, would you make to the administration <clears throat> of the sheriff's department if elected? To the administration, I think, you know, when the sheriff is elected, you get to choose two people. You have a, an under sheriff and an administrative secretary. That's pretty much the extent of the people that the sheriff brings with him. Uh, I believe it's important <laughs> to work with your administration, the current administration that's there, which would be your majors, your captains, lieutenants, and supervisory team. Um, I think that, uh, on some of those, they might be a little heavy and need to be uh, maybe lessened by one or two and uh, make sure that we are covering the things that need to be covered. But if we have access to uh, get rid of some of those, when I was sheriff in the past, that was one of the goals that I was working towards was bringing down those numbers. Okay, Kim? Uh, in terms of uh, management as it stands currently, I'm in favor of a total uh, reorganization to community policing. And that would uh, necessitate some of their uh, focus and their uh, current responsibilities uh, to be shifted or changed uh, to facilitate the needs of patrol and frontline uh, responders. Uh, that said, it, we do have to look at the ratio as in terms of uh, how many per uh, deputy sergeant, lieutenant people are managing. It is possible that there is a little bit of a top heavy, as they would say, uh, situation now, although I can't really be sure about that. But if we go through uh, total reorganization, their roles are going to be changed uh, because we're going to focus on those who deliver service. Thank you. Kim, discuss domestic violence and the responsibilities and challenges of the Sheriff's Department in enforcing laws and assisting in the resolution of complaints. Domestic violence, uh, uh, the, the issues in general uh, speech are about uh, women and or men being abused and then failing to support prosecution of uh, those abusers once police or law enforcement are called in. So you're always going to have to be uh, through a victim assistance program or something outreaching to uh, people who experience that, who've come into the judicial system and need support in order to get a prosecution of their abusers. Uh, that said, 
uh, if we look at a true community policing model, uh, we are going to be a lot more responsive to early calls long before hopefully those materialize into actual physical violence. So that uh, beat officers are going to be more familiar with who they're serving. Thank you, Todd. You know, domestic violence is one of those issues that's very uh, um, important for law enforcement. I mean, having been in law enforcement in Doniana County for over 30 years, I've seen those laws change as times have progressed and things have changed within the community. Um, I think it's very important that we make sure that we take care of the people involved, the victims, and make sure they get the help they need through the victim advocates and the people that are in place in the sheriff's office. But I also think it's very important that our officers receive the training that they need so that they can properly take care of those things and identify them and make sure that they get reported correctly. Um, you know, we need to make sure there's a lot of things that can happen as far as uh, maybe separating people and, and removing the problems for time frames and, and making sure that paperwork gets through the court system correctly and officers are having to make sure that's driven through correctly so thank you Todd if you're elected how would you use the money from the Stone Garden grant which allows deputies to work side by side with federal agents in border security I think that the Stone Garden grant is one of those that has been brought up a lot lately and I was one of the original sheriffs involved in the uh, origination of that uh, the sheriffs went to Washington and fought, and that's the sheriffs from all uh, border sheriff counties from California to Texas. We fought for those funds to help offset the problems that we had on our, in our border communities and to um, help us provide resources and training and different things for the, for the officers inc uh, included. When the grant finally came through, it was given to the state, and then we fought that to have it returned to the county so that we could keep the monies here in the county and we felt we could use it better. I think it's important to make sure that it's tracked, that we have uh, uh, planned missions for that money, that it's uh, taken care of properly. And there's a lot of different ways it can be used. It can be used in gang violence and drugs and different things like that, different issues that are uh, here and because of the border issues that we have. Okay. Kim. The focus of Stone Garden Grant is drug interdiction. Uh, that grant is a FEMA appropriated funding for uh, many states, but primarily border states. Um, we have uh, been recipient as a county of that, those funds for at least uh, eight years that I'm aware of. And uh, the largest part of those funds are for overtime. And uh, what I'm able to piece together from public rec records request is that it has often been used, uh, well, I would say a mandate without a mission. So the Board of County Commissioners accepts the funds and then it becomes a, a, a pool for overtime. So we need to really look closely at what can be done with those funds that truly help our community and our constituents. Uh, currently, I'm not convinced that occurs. Thank you. So Kim, what programs will you implement to sort out prisoners with mental health issues and provide them with proper treatment? Uh, currently, uh, we, th there is a program called the LEADS program. And uh, that is where agencies, law enforcement can come together and can determine which uh, crimes, low level crimes are predominantly um, uh, violated, if you will, uh, by people with mental illness. And we can begin to decriminalize those particular crimes. So if we find in our community shoplifting by mentally ill is a large issue, we can give uh, responding deputies the option to take them to jail or to direct them into mental health programs. And by the way, it's not a, I may attend or I may feel like doing it. It's you will do it. You will do it or you will go to jail. That said, that's a great option for local <coughs> law enforcement to come together. Thank you, Todd. Yeah, mental health issues and concerns in the state of New Mexico and across the country are growing uh, at a, an alarming rate. And I think it's one that we need to uh, try to address better. I think there are a number of different uh, communities around the country that have have worked hard to address some of these issues and copying from them and, and learning from what they've done would be uh, a smart thing to do. 
I, I know law enforcement um, is constantly trying to change its uh, process, how we respond to the different types of calls and different things like that as we learn more and more about the mental illness issues um, and how to uh, better deal with them. And I think that's important. We need to train our officers to handle those things better and, and also work with the courts and, and the different people involved. And I believe it's a community effort. It's gotta be one that the, the whole community fights because law enforcement by itself can't take care of it and the government by itself can't take care of it. We have to get everybody involved, so. Todd, how would you propose to better help prisoners that have a addiction issues so that they don't keep returning to prison? You know, that's a great question. I think over the years, the 30 years that I have in uh, law enforcement here in Doniana County, I've been able to see families that were, uh, had issues with, with those kinds of things and how it affected uh, the children, the grandchildren and those kinds of things. And, and I, you know, I don't know what the exact answer is. I think that we need to work more closely with our, uh, the people out there that can offer help. We, we respond as law enforcement to the things that happen whenever we're called, whenever the issues have gone bad, you know, whenever there's a problem at, at the house or whatever. But if we could get involved at a different level and try to stop those things from occurring by getting people the help they need, uh, getting people help whenever they get out of jail, I think that would be great. Uh, if we could find the funds to do that and the different people to help with that, I think that would be a, an awesome thing to do. Okay. I think part of the value of community policing uh, on a full transformation is partnering with various current nonprofits that do that kind of uh, work uh, or have that as their focus. Uh, I think when we partner with the community as a whole, uh, we're going to be able to uh, become involved in not only uh, providing uh, our experience and our own uh, point of view, but uh, problem solving. So I, I believe we can, over time, begin to address uh, some of these, uh, what I would call quality of life issues. Uh, that said, methamphetamine rise is, is on, uh, or methamphetamine use is on the rise in our county. Uh, so uh, I think keeping abreast of these trends and keeping track of statistics, which currently the Sheriff's Department does not do with any great uh, knowledge. Thank you. Kim, what is the proper balance between punishment and rehabilitation? What more can be done to lower the recidivism rate? Well, again, uh, community policing gets involved with uh, communities, uh, which we have many in this county, very specific uh, uh, needs in various parts of our county. We get involved and we become so much a part of the fabric of that community that we begin to know who is, is trending towards uh, violence or crime or corruption or whatever you call it, and we're we're involved at an earlier stage. So that, for instance, if you have a young man who's constantly trespassing across property, well, the first thing would not be arresting him. Rather, let's find out, number one, why he's not in school, or where he's going, etc., and begin to look at these problems before they become a crime. Community policing, it's been around 30 years, it's been shown to impact that particular pipeline uh, very significantly. Thank you, Todd. Could you repeat that sure. question, please? What is the proper balance between punishment and rehabilitation? What more can be done to lower the recidivism rate? I, I think that, uh, you know, as law enforcement officers, we are out to enforce the laws that, that the state passes, um, that our legislators pass and put into place. And it's important to work with them on some of these issues. I think law enforcement has a pretty good feel for what's happening on the street level and it's important for us to get more actively involved with our legislators on some of these issues to make changes that need to be changed. Um, you know, I, I believe in holding people accountable for uh, the crimes that are committed, but I don't think it's something we have to put people in jail for. I think there are other ways. I, I believe that working with our uh, judges and maybe some of the uh, corrections people to try to figure out what would better work in place of just putting people in jail and, and trying to reform them that would be a, a big help to try to figure out exactly what we could do to make it better before we turn them loose and, and get them back out on the street. Thank you. Todd, what additional training programs would you like to see to not only improve the performance of department personnel, but also to improve morale? 
You know, I think training is very important. In my, in my career, I was a training officer and I trained a lot of officers. I believe it's important to get our officers trained to become instructors because then you can train more people with, uh, on, a, on a smaller budget. Um, we work real hard right now to maintain what the state requires. Every two years, the state has a requirement that they come up with based on uh, the different issues they feel are important, such as mental health and, and different things like that, domestic violence training. And it's important to stay up to date and on top of that, but it's also important to make sure that our officers are growing and working in the, in the direction that they are best suited for. And so I would work harder for that kind of, uh, you know, some are meant to be farms instructors and some are meant to be driving instructors and, and making sure that we have the right people in the right places and that they are suited right to train the other officers. I think that's very important. Currently, the state provides a, a base level, if you will, of training for officers commissioned in the uh, state of New Mexico. And when they go out to our academy, for instance, uh, they get additional training in um, not only what's, what is relevant in our community, but what the county or the, uh, the law enforcement agency here believes is necessary. That said, we do have a tendency to meet the standard in a lot of training. And I believe by refocusing our, our funds, uh, by refocusing our focus on, on those who deliver service, the line deputies, we are going to be able to get them a higher level of training. And that investment is going to give us a return uh, in regards to them wanting to remain with our department. We invest in them, they're investing in the community. Thank you. Kim, if two million more dollars were allocated to the Doña Ana County Sheriff's Department, how would you spend it and why? I would look at um, uh, possibly ceasing Stone Garden. Right now, uh, Stone Garden is a $1.2 million award this year or for 2019. And uh, if we were able to get to $2 million, um, I think that a couple of things could w be done. We could uh, begin to focus on the true needs of our community. We could use those funds then for overtime to bulk up our own, uh, our, our own presence without uh, demands or without meeting parameters. Uh, second of all, I think we would uh, need to look at really updating our computer systems and our uh, systems uh, with regard to uh, uh, focusing on where crimes are com uh, being committed and what our response could be in real time. Currently, it's very much delayed. So we would know that. Thank you, Todd. I mean, Two million dollars does not go very far when you have an office the size of, of Doniana County, uh, but I believe that we would have to improve our communication system. Uh, there are some parts of the county which is still dark where you uh, go over a, a certain hill or in a certain valley and you have no communications and I think that uh, trying to get better communication systems set up to where we can protect our officers uh, making sure that they can communicate with dispatch and, and other officers that are responding to help them is very important. And keeping up with the equipment that's needed on a daily basis, our, our vehicles, uh, the equipment that officers use every day to uh, take care of the people in Doniana County, and then also for training, uh, better training and do things like that. I think that the, uh, uh, those are some of the biggest issues that I would tackle and deal with. Todd, if money was not an issue, Okay, so money's not on the table on this one. Would you support the mandatory use of body cameras for officers as many departments have done? I believe body cameras are a great tool and I believe that that's one of the things I plan on looking into. Um, we were able to get cameras into our cars. Uh, eventually, after, after fighting for some of the resources, we were able to get that done. Uh, I think it's just better to have cameras. I think it, it holds everybody accountable to the job that they're doing. You know, I, it, it, it's good for our officers. People can see clearly what happened. And uh, I think if people know that uh, they're being uh, filmed and different things like that, the public even reacts differently sometimes. So I think it's a great, uh, great tool. And I would make sure, I mean, that's, that's one of the things I would like to work on making sure we get. 
Yeah. It seems that it's mandatory in today's world. When uh, we can have uh, everybody out on the street with a cell phone, uh, videotaping it in a moment's notice uh, with very little training, uh, and yet w our law enforcement doesn't have that capability, I think we're at a great disadvantage. Uh, when things go down and when in unfortunate incidences occur, we need to see it from our deputy's perspective. That to me should be paramount. It is for our protection as well as for the public's right to know, for their transparent, uh, for our being transparent with them. Uh, I will say there are agencies in the country that are releasing that footage edited and I disagree with doing that. Okay, Kim, what more can be done to better enforce DWI laws and reduce driving under the influence? I, I, I'm a believer that early education with, with children is uh, where a lot of that should start. Uh, we get into uh, uh, high schools uh, with deputies now, but uh, to me it's waiting a little too long. I think we should have a lower uh, a presence at a lower grade so that some of this can begin to be uh, brought up. For instance, we, we impacted a whole generation of smokers, did we not, by telling five-year-olds how bad it was for them. Uh, for their parents and they went home and told the parents and I believe that uh, that uh, alcohol abuse and uh, abuse of uh, the vehicle when you're under the influence uh, can be mitigated a lot by early education. Uh, that said, I am uh, in favor of higher penalties, higher financial pen penalties. I believe they do a lot to impact of reoccurrence. Todd? DWI is, is one of those uh, crimes in the state of New Mexico that's been uh, rampant for a long time. Um, with 30 years experience here working with the city PD in the state of New Mexico and in Doniana County, I've seen a lot of uh, the results of, of that kind of those actions. And you know, we used to have something in the sheriff's office called the Wolf Pack. And every, when I became sheriff the first time, they wanted to bring that back. And I, I told my officers I was not gonna do that because I was not going to chase kids further away from home and make it harder for them to get home that we needed to find some other uh, other way to do that and i think that you know uh, we've we've tried training we've tried all kinds of different things and i think until people in this in this country take it seriously it's one of those things i, I just for 30 years i've been wondering the same thing what can we do um, i think that maybe as part of the the uh, penalty for something like that is to take some of these people out on the street with us when we respond to some of these things and let them see it firsthand it might make a difference Todd, what issue, if any, would require immediate attention if you are elected sheriff? Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. What issue, if any, would require immediate attention if you're elected sheriff? If I'm elected, I believe that uh, working with the sheriff office, office itself and all the people involved in that office, bringing them together, uh, getting together with them, meeting them one-on-one -on -one and talking to them about the problems and the issues that are currently going on, and addressing those issues and working the problems out and making sure that after a very short period of time we're, we're a one again. I think that's, that's very important, the first step is. And I think secondly is to get the office out doing what we're supposed to do, serving the public the way we are and to try to rebuild the trust in the, in the uh, people in Doniana County. I think that uh, there's a real trust issue with law enforcement and uh, the public, and I think it's very important that the Sheriff's Office here in Doniana County work on that in a very serious way and uh, to garner the trust back and to make sure that, uh, to show them that they are being served and, and things are being done properly. Okay. We, meet, we need to meet with uh, each line or strata of the department so that deputies would meet with me and the under sheriff, as would sergeants, but in their own level, so that they can speak freely about their concerns and give us input about where they believe we uh, should be heading or where we could make improvements in both the long and the short term. Uh, that said, we desperately need an audit of the sheriff's department, a full, complete audit. Uh, it has never been done. And we need to know the current state of affairs with the funds for the department. We also need to uh, determine how much uh, duplication of effort goes on by employees. 
that said, we would have a real handle on where we are and how we're going to go forth in the next quarter. Okay, this is, this is the last question. Kim, how would you attract more new recruits and improve their initial and ongoing training, including training on dealing with mental health issues? Uh, we have to cast a wider net for recruits. Um, I, uh, I have talked with the uh, county uh, psychologist and uh, talked to him about looking for recruits maybe who uh, would not necessarily be uh, first glance uh, give us a look. Uh, we need to not only uh, recruit for the current uh, level of, of competence and ability, but we need to look for good communicators and good problem solvers because that's going to be crucial with restoring trust and going out in when we go out into our communities. Um, that said, um, as I believe we probably meet the standard with training, but we really need to exceed that standard. We need to invest in them as individuals so that if they choose to uh, uh, become sergeants and above, we've given them the skills to do that. Thank you. Todd. I believe that uh, you know, law enforcement, especially like with the sheriff's office, it's important to uh, get people who want to belong to the community. I mean, I'm not just saying people in the community. I mean, if we get people to move down here, we need to keep them here. Uh, if we reach out and we get people to come, we need to stay competitive. I don't believe that an office, our sheriff's office has to be the highest paid in the, in the county, or, but it needs to be competitive with surrounding law enforcement or else you're gonna lose those people. If we can do that and keep the funds in the uh, sheriff's office to keep our officers paid at a, at a competitive level, I believe that most of these officers wanna spend a 20 year uh, retirement time with an office and, and grow because that's the only way you can move up through the ranks and, and actually make more money in the long run for retirement. And I think that once you get them in here, it's important to keep them trained properly. It's, it's important to work on those mental health issues and those uh, DWI issues that come up that they're out there fighting every day and make sure they have the tools necessary to get it done. Thank you. Republican Todd Garrison and Democrat Kim Stewart. Thank you both for being with us. Thank, thank you, guys. you. And thank you to Kim Sorensen, the president of the League of Women Voters of Greater Las Cruces. Thank you, Fred. Always great being with you. Thank you for your partnership with the League. Thank you at home for making this election programming possible. Now it's up to you to vote. Have a great week.